Hi guys, welcome back to another reaction video here on Our Eyes Your Eyes. I'm ready to watch episode 3 of season 2 of Made in Abyss, but before starting this video I just want to remind you to subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell, leave a like to support me and join me in this tremendous adventure. Okay, in the previous episode we saw that Rico, Nanachi and Reg reached the Magikaja and now Magikaja is taking them somewhere. Uh, I am afraid, to be honest. Let's see what's going to happen today. Are you ready to join me with these? Check it out. I have a bad, bad feeling. And I think Nanachi can relate because uh, even with the Mitty, it was the same thing. I mean, the fact that there were so many of them uh, were transformed. Oh! Oh, really? Ah. Uh, okay. But at least we have a reg, and this is. Uh. But did you see that when they they saw reg, they were like. Uh, <coughs> Exactly, that's what I was talking to you about last last time. <laughs> Who's that? No, Brushka. No, what are they trying to do? Okay, okay. But this seems uh, the same man, uh, the native, uh, that uh, he was... Uh, I mean, Magikaja seems uh, that... Uh... Oh my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> eh, well maybe yes. Huh? Okay, it's a vessel. Yeah. Oh no, where are we going? Look, every time I'm scared. <laughs> oh, it's like a village, eh? Yes, yeah, 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 exactly. No, exactly. Yeah, but is this a good thing? I mean, uh, maybe they stole it from uh, them, uh, I mean, from the people who tried to explore the yeah, this. Uh... What the F? See, I told you maybe they were taking all these things from uh, the explorers. I 
I don't think so. Oh no, look. Uh... No! Oh no! Oh no, F away! Uh, what symbol? Yeah. Exactly, no, but he knows how to handle these things. I mean, the reg comes from the bottom, so... <laughs> Look at Nanachi. <laughs> yeah. I agree with Nanachi always. <laughs> Oh my... Yeah, like uh, the Divine Comedy, more or less. The Contrapasso that I was talking to you before. Yeah. Oh. No, it's something disgusting. <laughs> eh, Mitty. Exactly. The first time that we see an egg laughing, I mean... <laughs> no! Oh... My... Here we go. We start. Oh no, I hope that it can recover. It's okay. Oh my. Yeah. What was that? Oh, oh. Oh, the balance here. What's going to happen now? No, 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 no. Oh, oh. Uh. What is this balancing? Uh? Oh my! Yeah! 
Yeah, it's like a sort of contrapasso. I mean, uh, you wanted a lot, and then in this case, they are going to steal you as much as. Uh, No, in fact... Uh... <laughs> That's true. Ah. Uh -huh. In fact, somebody else stole it. I hope that, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> Ah, but they understood. See, Rico, I think Rico is like Liza because even Liza tried to communicate with them, but they have a note from her. Ah, eh, she's the daughter of Liza, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she did too, I guess. Exactly. Ah, uh, maybe, or she's just an enthusiast. Huh? Exactly, exactly. They can understand her. You should. Uh, okay, but you should feel bad actually after what happened. Ah. Uh. <laughs> no, please. No, not you know. Ugh. I don't want to read these. Uh. <laughs> Poor Nanaji. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please eat it. <laughs> I think she has to poop. Yeah. But it's better if you don't separate because... Uh, Again, no, it's the same. No, I know. Fatta, Fatta, who's Fatta? Uh, 
Ah, uh, uh, in fact, uh, yes. Maybe that's the same uh, thing. No, in fact, don't leave them alone. Uh, mm. Ah, okay. I think he is more interested in Fapta sincerely. No. Oh! Oh, yeah! That's the same... Uh, yeah! Oh, I think that's the guide! Yes! That's her! I told you! I think that he is a Magikaja. In fact, I had a bad feeling, and in fact, now they are all being killed, in my opinion. Killed, I mean transformed. That was the beginning of the end. Meh. No, in fact, uh, wow, guys, uh, I think uh, that uh, the more we go on with this story, the more we will suffer, as many times uh, that I was telling you. Especially in this episode, uh, finally Magikaja is um, introducing uh, this village they reached uh, and uh, they could get in touch with uh, something uh, terrible, with uh, something disgusting i mean uh, even when we saw these uh, connection between the money and the sacrifice uh, or the fact that these uh, riko reg and nanachi can also become uh, something to sell as if uh, we are inside this uh, trade market uh, and look if we portray these uh, to real life uh, there are some countries in the world in which uh, there are these uh, human traits, in which there are these uh, procedures in which uh, human bodies or, yeah, people are sold to others. And uh, I want to call it a human trafficking because that's how it's called. But just to let you understand uh, these great parallelisms between uh, this fantasy story with uh, real life. Because unfortunately, even in our world, we have uh, so many tremendous, terrible, horrifying stories of uh, people uh, who experienced the tortures, who experienced the human trafficking, who experienced the kidnapping, who experienced the, some of the most ultra Joe's things. And I can't, of course, uh, explain you more than this because otherwise uh, this video will be blocked, but <clears throat> you understood what I mean. In this episode I felt so bad because it's like as if uh, we see these uh, hollows uh, that are trying to survive uh, and uh, 
by doing this they have uh, even the risk to lose what they got so far because of this will to gain more and more and more. As I was telling you in the previous episode, yeah, this reminds me the Divine Comedy of Dante Alighieri because over there too there was this concept of a hell that was uh, portrayed into the contrapasso thing and you saw the more Virgilio and Dante went down, down, down to hell, uh, the deep down they went, uh, the worse it was and uh, this uh, contrapasso layer after layer was increasing a lot until you reach the Lucifer but you see that these uh, souls are condemned forever and there is no way to survive, there is no way to escape from that sort of condition. So it's really awesome. I think uh, I love a Made in Abyss also because of this, because the Divine Comedy is one of my favorite uh, pieces of literature ever. I mean, uh, if you love literature, you know what I mean. And I think that that's uh, one of the reasons why I love this story. Also because uh, this story is uh, not for everyone, uh, I have to say. Only people who can handle uh, these uh, sort of uh, disgusting thing can go ahead. And I am uh, one of these uh, people because and no matter the disgusting thing that I'm about to approach to, I really wanted to see what the author wants to convey as a message and even if I will cry hard, even if I feel I will feel disgusted a lot, I think this story should have been watched. Even if it's not for everyone, I think that this story should have the chance to be watched because we can't avoid the hardest and the most disgusting things that are happening in this story also because even in the real world they are happening so if we don't watch this story we are automatically denying even what's happening in the real world we are just uh, closing our eyes in front of evidence in front of the facts that I repeat you, unfortunately the world is full of these sort of bad stuff and yeah descending the abyss it's like descending to hell and i think that even in this world we sometimes can reach hell not because we are going deep down somewhere but because we are deep going deep down inside of our consciousness and sometimes we can find some bad stuff so i think that this story is also a chance to measure our level of uh, feelings uh, when we approach something disgusting, when we approach something that we can't understand or we don't want to understand. What we saw in this episode, especially during the market scene, I was like, oh my, when Eriko was about to be sold, I mean, they were talking about eyes, skin, eh? there was a moment in which uh, I felt so disgusted that I couldn't comment anything, but I like uh, Rico's resolution. I think uh, now more than ever we will uh, be able to understand uh, the great power that this uh, main character has, because as much as we were seeing even in this episode, she was always uh, trying to find a solution, not just uh, by interacting with them in a matter of the difference of language, but even uh, how she was stopping them, how she was resolute enough to say, no, I don't want to do this, no, please stop, I don't like this. I mean, Every time you see that in this uh, market area, everyone is going ahead, even when uh, they were reaching uh, this uh, balancing moment, uh, as if uh, everyone had to say yes, 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 and nobody was uh, rebelling to this, because once you know that you can't escape from a, from a place, uh, you know that you are condemned forever and there is no other way. You don't know another way to go away. So the only thing you have to do is just to accept what's happening to you and I think that it's just a way to give up somehow. But Rico didn't reach that level still because she doesn't know everything that happened so far. So of course uh, her resolution is totally different 
also because she was lucky enough that nothing happened to her but we saw that throughout the layers Rico, Reg and Nana she had the power to communicate and the power to say honestly what they didn't like to, to, to try to defeat everything that was wrong in their opinion and that's why they could make it I guess so when uh, Rico was uh, uh, protesting about everything that was happening uh, even Magikaja was a little bit confused because I think uh, that these sort of things didn't happen uh, till that moment and that's why they didn't know how to reply to them I mean uh, they didn't know how to say if they were right or wrong because they have never experienced something like this because that sort of a life over there was going ahead as if it was good to do something like this as if they were convinced that they were brainwashed that that was the only thing to do just to accept without rebelling without provoking without saying their honest opinion and that's why once they turned into hollows there was no turning back let's say just to go ahead uh, with that uh, sort of lifestyle, let's say. Yeah, when did they, when did they reach the, that note from Liza? Wow, I mean, uh, it means, uh, as much as we were saying already, that Liza reached that level. It means that Liza is uh, not over there anymore. Is this because uh, she was already done i mean is it because she was already transformed into a hollow and we don't know is it because she could protest i mean she could go out against all these as much as rico is doing and that's why uh, maybe rico is just uh, the tiny version of lies that is uh, trying to do more or less the same thing is it because uh, even Liza turned into an Olo or into something even more evil than what's happening now and it means that she could pass over the next layer but then we will encounter her look my, my fear is still this that we will encounter Liza and Rico will not be able to save her or Rico will go against her mom because her mom will try to attack her I mean that's uh, what I fear the most to be honest but yeah that note from Liza was already portraying uh, in my opinion these uh, fapta or something I mean I think that that thing that was on the note it was the same thing as a faputa uh, I mean uh, not the faputa but this uh, robotic thing that was next to faputa maybe so hmm that's interesting because I think that even Liza met them at this point but uh, why that note uh, was uh, uh, reaching that market uh, at this point I mean uh, does this mean that somebody stole from Liza these notes because uh, there was no other choice to gain info or does this mean that Liza paid with this note in order to gain something else because we have noticed that in this market they say look if you want something you have to give me something too but you have to sacrifice a part of yourself because you can't give other objects I mean you can't uh, make these a trade thing by giving something that is belonging to you but you have to give something from yourself that means skin eyes hair I mean everything that is coming from you so what if even Liza tried her best by giving these notes or by convincing this market that by giving this note it was like uh, just uh, giving a part of herself uh, I mean we don't know but as much as for what was happening to Mania later what if uh, even for Liza it was the same or what if uh, these uh, things uh, that were coming from Liza they were just the result of the balancing because we know that through this balancing procedure everything was coming out from this hollow and most of the things were objects so what if uh, even Liza was transformed into a hollow and then she wanted more and more and more and then the balancing thing happened so Liza is gone but at the same time this note uh, was uh, surviving the, it was found and it was uh, sold once again on the market
that was really interesting to see that Liza at least reached that point. So we know that uh, maybe she could have gone further or not. We still have to know, but of course, uh, Rico, when she saw that, she wanted it because uh, that was uh, like uh, as if uh, something was belonging to her. And of course, uh, that's true because that's uh, her mother's uh, uh, legacy. So, of course, we need that piece of paper more than ever. Another thing is Prushka. Wow, Prushka is not rebelling. What does that mean that that um, white whistle that we saw so far, it's not the ultimate form. I mean, it's not the real form of uh, the white whistle. Does this mean that while curving this, we are going to discover something else? That's really interesting because the more we go ahead, the more, yes, I agree with Reg because uh, even Reg was saying, don't tell me that everything uh, that is uh, happening now is handled by a white whistle. I mean, what if everything that is going on here is just uh, because of the will of a white whistle? And what if, uh, I open a bracket, uh, this white whistle uh, might be Liza, close the bracket. I don't even want to imagine that, but everything can be possible in this story. And if we wanted to reach the pure depression and um, the ultimate form of sadness, I think that this might happen too. But okay, let's stay tuned and keep on watching. But look, I wanted to tell you one thing. Sometimes I believed that Magikaja might be even uh, that uh, man who wanted uh, all these uh, ganja trying to find the golden city. I mean, uh, it was considered as a priest or something. And, and even Belaf, uh, at that time, he was uh, saying, he was uh, talking about uh, these uh, priests. I mean, uh, these uh, men who was conducting all these ganja group uh, to the golden city as if he was, yes, uh, uh, the person who could guide them, etc, etc. Yeah, Magikaja maybe can be that person who transformed into a hollow. I mean, uh, I thought uh, that they had uh, the same voice. Uh, am I true? Am I wrong? I don't know. But what if uh, all these uh, hollows are also part of that Ganja group? Uh, what if uh, something happened to them? And, and in fact, uh, I really like the fact that they show us uh, these uh, flashback. Uh, that it's uh, keep going ahead because it's the only way in which we can uh, understand what happened. Uh, look, even uh, the hollow that was carving uh, Prushka, I mean, uh, somehow it reminds me that native uh, old man that they found uh, on top of the abyss uh, before descending, uh, and that old man uh, who knew many things about the curse and whatsoever. He was also talking in that uh, strange language, but it was like as if he was a sage. And uh, that's why now when uh, that hollow was carving a Prushka, I mean, I had the same feeling. It was inside a cave as much as uh, uh, at the beginning of this story where we see that that man, that all the native men was inside that cave. I mean, there were so many similarities between uh, what happened in episode one with this episode, something that is uh, letting us understand that there is a connection between uh, what happened in the past and what's happening now, as if this curse keeps going ahead. But yeah, I had that feeling. And then uh, we are talking about this Faputa, that is uh, this uh, princess, they call her like this, uh, this uh, princess of uh, balancing the value. I mean, this uh, thing that is deciding everything over there. It's like as if uh, it's um, a way to condemn or to spare. I got that feeling as if we are inside of a yeah, ancient culture pyramid or a hierarchy or something like that because uh, 
everyone who felt Faputa coming, they said, uh, usually she doesn't come out. Uh, and sometimes it's really, really hard to detect her because you can't see her or something like that. And that's why I was uh, saying to you in the previous episode that maybe this uh, thing that was hiding, that was uh, checking uh, Riko, Reg and Nanachi has uh, somehow a connection with uh, maybe the guide, I mean, the woman, that girl who couldn't have babies and that's why she was condemned, she was cursed and she was said that she had to go uh, till the bottom of the abyss or Weko. So I was telling you one of the two, if you remember, or I was also telling you this white whistle who keeps hiding and checking what's going on. So yes, later we discovered that Faputa is maybe that girl that I was talking to you about. I mean, that guide. <laughs> they, that they took them down inside the abyss. What if uh, this guide cooperates now with all these things and she became so bad and uh, she was forced to do something like this as a contrapasso, right? I mean, she guided all these people throughout the bottom of the abyss until they reached this golden city, but later you see deep inside their eyes the fear because they can't go back. And in fact, even um, Weko, I think that that was Weko's voice. Uh, you hear that he, that she, yeah, that she is saying, uh, we didn't even know at that time still the way. To survive because of course uh, once they saw this golden city they were appreciating this they were so amazed but then they could get in touch with this robotic uh, thing and they couldn't communicate because they couldn't understand their language first i think that that guide girl knew the language because we know that these natives knew many things about the bottom of the abyss so yeah i think that that's fapta that's her but I don't understand why she is still getting in touch with these robotic things. What happened that day? I mean, now we are getting in touch with this flashback back. And I'm so happy for that because we needed to understand what caused her to become Faputa. Did she do that as a mere sacrifice? Was she sacrificing herself for the sake of all these Genja group? because maybe she was told that if she wanted to sacrifice herself, then all the others could survive somehow. And then later, actually, they were transformed into hollows and whatsoever. I mean, we needed to understand what was the price to pay in order to reach what they reached and how they reached their human forms were lost and whatsoever. So I think... Uh, that that's another interesting thing but what if uh, she was already a princess before even descending the abyss but she couldn't have kids so she was condemned to stay over there no matter what this is uh, so interesting but from the eyes that we saw of faputa i could realize that that was the guiding girl i mean yeah but at this point where's weko because i am so curious to see where is she? Where did she go? And was she sacrificed too? I mean, we don't see her anymore. We just see Faputa, and I think Faputa is that girl, but what if uh, Faputa had to kill Weko? Or Weko had to sacrifice in order for her to survive somehow? We don't know. But by hearing Weko's voice in the background, it means that we still have to meet her. Or we still have to understand what happened to her because this is becoming uh, disturbing, I guess. And yeah, I really like even uh, the way in which uh, in this anime you understand the difference of each layer, uh, the colors, and even um, the way in which these layers are represented. Because, uh, for example, even this layer had this red tone as if... Uh, these red can mean all the blood that was spread throughout the time by all of these balancing thing. I mean, you saw these red tones of colors on the walls as if uh, that's uh, connected to the blood of all the people who were sacrificed or all the people who were turned into, I don't know, into these hollows, into these creatures that uh, they don't have a, a way to turn back into normal anymore and look connected 
with what I was saying uh, in the previous episode, it's like, yeah, as if a Faputa at this point uh, is guiding Rick or Reg and Nanachi to that point because maybe Faputa too wants to meet them somehow. And by making that uh, upside down uh, mark on Rico, on Nanachi, nothing on the reg because, yeah, I think a Faputan maybe knows a reg. I told you already that they had the same marks as if even uh, reg is a native. And you know that even on reg we have these artificial arms uh, as much as a Magikaja is all made of, uh, I mean, something robotic, it's not uh, a human anymore. So, yeah, I think that there is this necessity, this will to meet them. And if Faputa was looking at them throughout all this time, it's because maybe she wants to meet them, maybe she knows some things that they still don't know, and maybe Faputa was asked by Liza to meet them in the case they are coming. I mean, we don't know, but... Definitely there is a reason why they needed to meet Faputa, sincerely. And she was pretty fast, even in the previous episode, when she was appearing and then she was going. So I think that that's her, sincerely. But we still needed to understand why she was, obs she was observing them. And yeah, even in the previous episode, there were these... Uh, creatures that when uh, that butt was open do you remember they found the hair of Rico and the skin of Nanachi so that was anticipating what was happening in the trademark and why it was closed because you know that if it's closed like when Nanachi was saving Amenia if uh, uh, the butt is restored, oh, sorry, <laughs> but I don't know how to explain it in a different way. They are safe. So why those are two creatures with that butt that was closed and that they tried to open and then there was a Rico's hair, why it was closed? Does this mean that maybe Faputa wants to protect them somehow? Instead of uh, making uh, this voodoo style message or something that is creepy? Or... Maybe, yeah, Faputa is condemned forever, so she wants to kill them all, too, or she wants to sacrifice them. I, I don't know, there are so many things to discover. What I've noticed that at the end of the episode, specifically, is this uh, will to discover that keeps going ahead, because Rico has this instinct. I mean, she is uh, the daughter of Liza, so, of course, we know that... She has this instinct too. She has the will to discover inside herself and she is not giving up. She wants to go ahead. Or maybe it's her way to exercise everything that she experienced so far. I really like this attitude she has, even if sometimes I, I, I am speechless because she keeps smiling and she keeps going ahead and maybe I don't know if I would have had the same resilience uh, as much as she is having. So congrats, Rico. I mean, you have lots of guts, sincerely, <laughs> yeah. By going back right now with what happened in season one and all the explanations that were given about Liza and stuff like that, we know that Rico was confined into these uh, relics, do you remember? And by being uh, confined over there, she could uh, survive uh, uh, the moment in which they were climbing up the abyss, do you remember? So she could survive. That's why Rico could have gone on living, but... Even now in this episode that they were trying to ascend the abyss a little bit and Rico was really afraid because she knew about the curse, she knew about these force field thing, etc, etc. And Nanachi was trying to reassure her that nothing is going to happen. Yeah, even in this case, why nothing is happening in this part, in this small part of the abyss in which there is not the power of the force field and no matter if you're trying to ascend the abyss, the force field is not going to go in action. I mean, they don't have any counter effect. The curse is not happening. So this is another interesting thing. I mean, we don't understand why over there nothing is happening if they try to go up and this is another interesting thing to know too maybe all 
that Faputa was doing was to help these hollows and all of these uh, people who transformed into hollows. They were trying to ascend the abyss and they couldn't make it and they were transformed into hollows because of uh, the fear, the force field or something else happened. Hmm. There are so many things uh, that we still don't know and uh, that's why I like uh, to keep guessing about uh, this story because sometimes I'm right, did you see? Like a Faputa that I was uh, saying, mm, that's the girl guiding them at the beginning of the story. I mean, that was really awesome to discover that I was right in that case. Even if I gave you four options, but one of the options was right, so yeah. But as much as I was uh, telling you that Weko and uh, this girl uh, had a great connection because uh, since the moment uh, she wanted to grab Weko and this gesture made us understand that she wanted to stay with her so much. Yeah, that reminded me Nanachi and Mitti. So that's why I'm saying that maybe this uh, area of the abyss can affect Nanachi more than Riko, sincerely, because she also, Nanachi too, experienced this thing and maybe she can be the only one understanding of Aputa at this point, because uh, by experiencing that tragedy too, in this case, uh, Faputa can have a sort of a connection with Nanachi or something might happen to Nanachi. Maybe Nanachi is going to sacrifice for the sake of Oreg and Rico in order for them to go ahead with the adventure. I hope not, because I really love Nanachi and I'm so grateful that she's part of this group, sincerely. Not just because she has this superpower regarding reading the consciousness, not just because she is so great because if something bad is happening she can cure them, but because of her personality. I really like Nanachi and I hope that nothing is going to happen to her, please. Let's see what's going to happen next time with episode 4 of season 2 of Made in Abyss. In the meantime, feel free to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. Bye guys, see you in the next video.